I'm Liz Arego here at the drawing room and I'm here with our good friend Corey Newfer. Hello. Hey Corey. So we're here, we're doing a um, a live tasting. Yeah. Live stream, it's live true. tasting. So much life here. <laughs> so the weather is, you know, a little dreary today, but Corey's here and she's gonna talk to us about the different wines and cocktails and delicious things that we can have from our friends at Westport Rivers. And I'm gonna let Corey show you what uh what you can taste and actually we're going to be here until 7 p.m tonight the live stream will not go that long um but you can feel free to stop by uh shop in the store and uh taste a little bit of what corey has for you so i'm gonna turn it over to you corey yeah so the farmer's fist uh i decided to open the bottles even though we have the cans as well um the bottles as some of you might know is how the farmer's fist started uh, in 2013, we had a bumper crop at the vineyard where we had extra tons, 65 extra tons of Chardonnay. Um, and instead of making more just regular Chardonnay still wine, uh, we decided to live on the wild side and make what we call a Prosecco style. So that, uh, that happened and uh, the Farmer's Fizz became our most popular uh, item. Um, a lot of you might know that we're known for our champagne methods, which are sparkling wines as well. Um, Farmer's Fizz is not that. The, uh, the way we make it carbonated is we just add bubbles. Um, that is very different than the years it takes for us to make the champagne methods and all the aging, etc. cetera. Um, to drive home the point of how approachable Farmer's Fizz is, we did put it in a 22-ounce um, a beer bomber. So, that's what's going on here. Um, because we are an ocean community, we did have a lot of people asking um, about if we could put it in a can so people can more easily take it with them on their boat or on the beach. And so uh, last year, for the first time, we, um, we canned the Farmer's Fizz. We had two different sizes. This year, uh, we brought the bottles back. Um, people like that rustic. Yeah, yeah, you know, quality of cracking open a fresh bottle. Yeah, yeah, um, we also, ladies, would you, we have guests here. Yes, would you like a little? Yes, we came to see you. Yeah. Something yeah. that is so <laughs> lovely. I'm just going to hook some people up. Can you quickly, quick flash me your IDs? Oh. <laughs> right here, we'll count. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Okay, lovely, thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, of course. Lovely, oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yay! Oh, what are you sharing with everyone? All right, so I just shared the farmer's fist. Excellent. So most people hear prosecco style and they think prosecco. What we're actually saying is uh, we carbonated chardonnay and riesling, which does not sound as good. So <laughs> kind of a shorthand, but also yeah. Oh, no one does that to chardonnay and riesling. So we're kind of treading new ground. So we. We thought it's okay if we, we go that route. Prosecco, people love it. People love bubbly wines in general. Um, we've been doing this since uh, our first vintage was 2013 and it became our most popular. Um, every year uh, it's in the same wheelhouse. Sometimes we change up the grapes a little bit. Um, what we're going for is something scrumptious, delicious, refreshing, maybe too easy to drink. <laughs> it's um, good for summer. Right? Uh, now I have a little cocktail option as well, if you would like that. We do these wines where we'll take the, we'll take the wine, we'll throw in orange peels and vanilla beans and herbs, flowers, um, and then we add something flammable to it to bump up the alcohol. <laughs> so what I'm basically saying is we make vermouth. Yeah, it's like fortified. Exactly. The the word vermouth, as many of you know, has been tainted. People have <laughs> low expectations, the idea of drinking it by itself. 
okay. can be alarming to people. So in the last month, I have suddenly become a sort of regular at home vermouth drinker. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> And have been, <laughs> have been exploring different kind of... Did not pay for her to attend here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the few times we go out, trying some vermouths at oh. places. So. so, but how did this start? Um, well, my husband likes to make cocktails a lot, so we do have vermouth. And I know just from, like, what my favorite cocktails he makes are that um, I really liked the yeah. Dolan Blanc vermouth. Yes. And so... You were actually exhausted one night and went to bed, and I wanted another something to drink, oh. not anything too strong. And I'm yeah, like, why yeah, don't yeah. I, I'm like, I like the taste of the Dolan so much. Why don't I just drink a yes. little glass of that in the little? And that's how it started. It was like your secret, and it's it. wonderful. <laughs> Corey's the one who taught me how to um, drink vermouth because we were doing a live stream, <laughs> and uh, they were talking about vermouth so much. I said, I need to actually do this instead yeah. of just running the live stream. <laughs> I need to try some vermouth. Looking you know, on the wild yeah, side. You know, it, it opens up your, uh, your world. You, you made the grace a few years ago, right? Well, There's so all the vermouths and all of the, where we're, we just add the brandy to just wine, so that's what you're referring to, the yep, Grace yep. Chardonnay or Grace Pinot. Yep. yep. Um, those all have the word grace in it because um, Bill Russell, so he was the winemaker at the time. He is very fond of dad jokes and puns, <laughs> as many of us are. And so the pun was, instead of saying grace before your meal, maybe you should have some. So <laughs> it's, it's very dad joke punny. <laughs> Because one of the, or I should say, several of the vermouths or fortifieds that we do are dry. And those then are in the realm of what you call aperitif. Mm -hmm. So you have that before your meal. Aperitif comes from the Latin word, yeah, this is happening. <laughs> Aperio, meaning to open or to lay bare. Incidentally, I learned that by reading, um, I had a friend who would collect old cocktail books at garage sales, mm -hmm. and she brought in one day, um, this is a former coworker, she's now a winemaker in Oregon. She brought in one day the Playboy Mansion cocktail book oh. from like 1950, so, shut up. <laughs> you have one of those? I, 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 I think about it, I, I have the 19, early 70s version of that book. <laughs> what are the odds? I, I he just likes to, Yes, this is le legitimate. Yep. Um, if you weren't in the witness relocation program, <laughs> I'd have you step over here. Okay. <laughs> but I understand. Um, okay, so there was this beautiful write-up of what an aperitif is. And then the author painted this beautiful vignette of being in Barcelona, and it's 7 o'clock at night, and you're not going to eat for hours, but you want a little something. And you've got some, you know, sopressata, you've got some ubergo, Cracked olives, cheese, and you know, Pintos. yes, and you're gonna have a little bit of a dry vermouth just to whet the appetite. I always feel like when I can plan ahead like that, I feel very adult. You know, I'm just like maybe when even when I'm cooking, I'll have a little bit. I just love it. Little nibble, little drink. Mm -hmm. um, so what we have here, and we make these in very small batches. We use the same label on all of these vermouths or fortifieds. Um, and there's a little line here. Um, Chris Goyer is our assistant winemaker who helms our vermouth program. And he'll just hand write whatever he's doing. We always have a sweet, a dry, and a pastis. And then he does a seasonal. So this yeah, one is called yes. Fields Edge. Oh, yes. Yes. OK, so I thought that I had, like, he we went on a vacation three years ago. Um, we were in Aix-en-Provence, and he found me something called a pesticerie, where they made their own pesties. Oh. Which was just like, he's like, I won as a husband, because I love pesties so much. Um, I did not know that you do pesties. It's, most people don't really, I mean, it's a slow mover. I've never seen it anywhere. Is it only on site? The walls, yeah. Yes. Okay. Not, not because, um, Okay. Only because it's a it's a hand cell. Yeah. All right. these are hand cells. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So okay. well, we're, we're going to Westport tomorrow. So yep. It's closed on Sunday. Right. Oh. They're open till five tonight. Um, it's about it's yep. under thirty minutes away. Yep. Um, but yeah. So 
they're at, if you couldn't hear that world, they're asking about our pastis um, that we do. And it's very, for your, um, to use easier language to describe what it tastes like. I mean, there is a little black licorice, um, really nice concentrated lemony, um, really refreshing, rich. There are, uh, um, there are for ours of bready notes, almost like, um, kind of a, uh, not quite fresh baked. So part, part of our pastis, part of our, um, the other, uh, our new England dry and our sweet is we really go the extra mile with these and we'll take perfectly good, um, vintage champagne. And that's the base. And it is like, that's really cool. very complex, very just, one sip just lasts a long time. You just sit there and you're seized by it. And it's just so rich and full. Um, okay. So that's, that's the season. Sorry, sorry for, no, no, no. This is awesome. I'm so glad we're, <laughs> we're having this exchange. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour you a little more fizz and I'll just put a little, you know what? I'll just do this by itself. So you can try it. I'm actually very first. curious about this by itself. Um, so the, the field's edge is, um, what he, he has, um, uh, Chris has like a a backdrop of herbs, botanicals, and spices, um, and then he'll add something to that. Um, so we're talking things like you know wormwood is in all of them, orris root, gentian is a big mm -hmm. one, botanicals that are slightly herbaceous and a little astringent, a teeny bit bitter. Everything's judicious and in balance with itself, um, but it takes something that could normally be Let's say Saint Germain, the elderflower mm -hmm. um, liqueur. That's uh, something uh, helpful to keep in mind as you're trying to contextualize what this tastes like, your expectations. So it's very similar to that. But then um, he threw in a lot more extra um, linden flowers and um, marigolds. Mm. Um, so heavy, heavy on the floral. And then, um, so it has then the, the bitter quality as well. So it just becomes a much more complicated. Um, it is close to 40 proof. So it is very easy to drink by itself. Very smooth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is just, you know, a fortified infused yeah. wine we do. It warms up kind of as you let it linger. Ooh. Okay. I agree. Ah! <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's very, um, it was very dangerous. Like for me, um, what we've been doing uh, for cocktailing, if I may, um, in the vein of like a, an Aperol spritz, you know, we add the Prosecco. We're not putting club soda with this, but it's just this, again, it maintains its its refreshing quality. It, now there's some complexity. Um, our fizzes are, you know, they have what you call the good acidity. You know, they're high in acid, so they can make you drool, so they can cleanse the palate. So when you add sugar to things like that, it just explodes. So, um, there, you know, this is a sweeter... Uh, a sweeter fortified, and so it's just this really like easy to drink. I've been making um, like equivalent of Aperol spritz with the farmer's fizz, but using like Ramazzotti risotto or um, aperitivo, and it's just so good. It's Can you repeat that? So I make the equivalent of an Aperol spritz with the farmer's fizz, but with a, there's a Ramazzotti, like it's a rose aperitivo. Oh, so it's you know. It's just a little, it's, it's very light. Oh, wow. and, so, and yeah, and I'm not the, super big on bitters. So yeah. It's just this, it's yeah. just. Like it's definitely less, even yeah. less bitter than Aperol. Um, yeah. Aperol yeah. Oh. Bitter, so it's great. But, yeah. The, the farmer's fizz is kind of a staple for us. Oh my gosh. Are you in our wine club? We're not, yeah. we should be. Yeah. We should be. So we'll, we'll yeah. see by then next Saturday, okay? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a. Uh, I, I, I will also like segue, um, yeah. this account is very special. We do, we've been doing wine salons here. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing a lot of Zoom tastings. Um, 
our paid salon series we put on hold to try to figure out how we can translate that to Zoom. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to bring it back for October. Uh, but we're also going to make it into a book club, too. Oh, oh wow. Well, okay, great. Have you heard of this book? I have heard of it. I've not read it. You just buy it. She has copies. It will be the best wine book of any wine book you have. It will change your life. It's it's about how your body works. There's a lot of science in it. That's cool. Um, she's funny. She is an investigative reporter, Bianca Bosker, who wrote about it. Um, she even did things like, <laughs> you, I'm sure you have probably an aroma wheel at your house. We, or no. have you heard of them? Yes. Yes. Okay. They're, you know, you can get aroma wheels for beer and for uh, tequila, coffee, um, all, all sorts of wheels for that. Um, those are relatively new. Um, a woman named Ann Noble invented them. Um, and she was a UC Davis professor. And she is the reason why we talk about wine the way we do today. And I'm talking about, um, and I'll segue, or let me know when you're ready for the next wine. Um, like our, our rosé, for instance, our Pinot Noir rosé. I mean, that's very, um, there's kind of a, it's got like what a lot of rosés have, that strawberry watermelon thing going on. Um, but there, this one, uh, just this beautiful judicious acidity. So it's got kind of this strawberry lemonade quality. You know, it's a bubble gum, kind of a beach plum, nice tart, but very refreshing and juicy. Before Ann Noble, uh, and this, this is really spearheaded, of course, by the Europeans, you would anthropomorphize wines. You would say this is very elegant. You know, the tannins, um, they might be a little muscular. You know, you, 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 um, the pedigree of the vineyard, you know, you use these words that aren't really quite helpful. You wouldn't say there's notes of, you know, a little mineral or whatever, a, a teeny bit of oil gray tea finish. Like yep. she started this. So in the book, when she's talking about uh, getting ready to go visit Ann Noble, who's still alive, she said, the way we talk about wine right now is as old as disco. <laughs> I just love that. You know, it's a great way. It's what a writer can do is infuse a little humor and really drive home this phenomenon of what Americans have done to the, the wine industry. Um, okay. It makes me think of the movie Bottle Shock. Yep. Oh, yeah. Where it's the sort of California American wine okay. going to compete in Europe. <laughs> yes. The stayed, you know, centuries old and completely knocking them off their pedestal. Yeah. Have you read the book? No. I the Judgment of Paris. It's very good. Um, uh, the, I mean, it's the truth, you know? We were the underdogs um, and just, Westport Rivers often uh, is dismissed like that because a lot of people don't think you can grow grapes in Massachusetts. So it's this strange reverberation all, you know, you can get great wine now out of pretty much every state in the country. It, everything's changing now because they're- we had, we had a phenomenal wine from Texas a month ago. Oh, just in Maine. In Maine makes Ooh, great wine. Yeah. Like Westport Rivers makes great wine. Oh my gosh. Those pet nats, yeah, pet nats. Yep. amazing, amazing. We do we do a very limited one every year. Okay, cool. I would like to, you know, I'm always pestering them to do something on a larger scale. Um, uh, Greenvale does pet nats, or they have one. I think they might have a couple. Yeah, they're so, and they're so nice. So good. You said a couple months ago. A couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Where is that? It's in Portland, Rhode Island. Okay, okay. It's yeah. awesome. It's like. Right in a little, like an old barn, basically. And Very rustic yeah. and beautiful. Wonderful. They have one, I can't remember which wine it is, but because it's like right on the water, you open the bottle and it kind of smells like low tide. And I don't, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good way. Yeah. It's a good way. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's, this is wine country, but we yep. just, we haven't had, Liz, do you have any um, coastal? Coastal line, right? Yeah, let's I do. Show our friends online too. Yeah. So, 
These are very handy, these coastal wine trail passports. They have a map. So basically all the vineyards on the south coast of all of New England are part of what's called the coastal wine trail. And if you look at this map, and I don't think you can see this very clearly, there's a gray area here. Oh, this is hard to do. Coordination. Um, that is a microclimate. And you register that microclimate with um, this federal agency that uh, um, the American Viticultural, it's called an AVA, American Viticultural Area. It's like the equivalent of a like ESC. Yes. Just, I mean, that's, that's what it, it's doing. France first had it, Tuscany, you know, it's a way for you to kind of clean up the system and ensure, you know, AVAs. So ours is called Southeastern New England, Long Island. That's an AVA as well. Sonoma, they have many AVAs within Sonoma County. It's just a microclimate. So much rainfall, temperature, average growing days, the soil, yada, yada, yada. Um, so the Russell family, they were living in Dighton, which on the map here is right below my thumb. So Dighton, for 10 years, they tried to grow Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Riesling, all these vinifera or wine grapes and couldn't get them to, to fully ripen. That's only about half an hour away from here. It's a different microclimate here. Um, is it because is it because you're losing the maritime? Yes. Warmth? Yep. Yeah. Um, the you need just he was a couple weeks, perhaps too short of hang time in October, November, and you and you know the warmth and etc. Um, the the stability of the you know there's a more moderate climate. Um, so when the potato market was crashing in the 70s and 80s, all these potato farms on Long Island were starting to plant wine grapes. Sakonet, which isn't that far away, they were doing so. And so when um, this farm went for sale, and it's number 10 on here, um, the Russell family in Dighton, and they were thinking of moving to California to, to find some land to grow grapes, thought, oh, I bet, even if it's just half an hour south, it will, it will be warm enough, will be close enough to the water. And they were right. Amazing. So um, Greenvale, Sakonet, Newport, um, all these vineyards are in here. So there's there's helpful information in each in each uh, on each page. And then of course it's a passport. So as you go to these places, uh, they stamp this for you and you can win prizes. <laughs> so do you do you Oh yeah, oh, I've actually done the mine. Okay, so oh, I'm sure you're so good. And well, actually, I'm going to go to the vineyard. Yeah, you have to go to the vineyard. Okay. I know. Yeah, I'm good, but I'm not that good. That's so fine. Now, this is uh, third year or second year? Third? Or third year doing this. Okay, so you're so cool. good. I love that. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. It's, it's really fun. Uh, it doesn't take that long. No. I mean, you can hit like three here Running Brook, Saconet, Westport. And then right here in New Bedford, there's the Trevisia. Okay, I'm sorry. I So there will be a new passport. Marco yeah. now has come to Westport, and he yeah. is our winemaker. Right. And he's yes. closed down the winery. Okay. He will uh, – the plans are for him to be opening up a wine bar at some point. Um, when, when, when one can open wine bars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is, you know, as you know. Um, but we've enjoyed Trevisium. We're very glad to hear that he's with you. Oh yeah, he's such a joy to work with. That and well, you know him, yeah. so yeah, it's we're very lucky. Um, okay, and moving on. And then one night we were around downtown when Trevisi was open. And it's like let's go wine tasting. He does not like wine, and every single one he's like, "This is not bad." So I was like, "I told you, <laughs> like, these are great." Yeah. <laughs> Very easy to drink. Um, <laughs> very. Okay. This guy, uh, the Farmer's Fizz Red, I've got an article here. It was shouted out in the Boston Globe a couple days ago. Fantastic. So um, this is a new product, a new grape. It's called Marquette. It is uh, a little drippy here. So Anthony uh, sold us on this uh, few weeks ago 
I've always loved the farmer's fizz. Oh, yeah. And he's more the red wine drinker of the two of oh, us. Yes. So that, that four pack went poof. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, so this is, you know, it's 8.4 ounces. It's a sizable glass of wine, <laughs> but it's re it really just kind of disappears. And especially with the cold, it just is so perfect. It like meets all your needs for what you're wanting for a red wine. Um, it's got delicate, compl I mean, I've, you know, we, we can this in June and just in these couple of months, it is really coming into its own. It's fascinating um, how a wine, you know, with bottle aging, how it kind of goes Even from bottle can. shock. Yeah. What? Even in a can. Like this. Tastes, Absolutely. This tastes different from the can I drank a month ago. Yeah, it absolutely. really does. It's getting more complexity. There's um there's so a we've been so very much enjoying this with like grilling outside, going yes. to steak and hot you know, it's hot and you want something cold with it. Yes. And yeah. I mean I I tend to not be a seasonal drinker. Like I, I drink white wine all all year. Um I drink red wine all year. Um but when it is sweltering out, and that's been this, you know, the past couple summers, oh it's such a like it's needed. <laughs> it's like so needed. Yeah, you love this. One. It's, it's really yummy. Have you done uh, any cocktails with it? Not yet. No, okay. I, I was trying to figure what to do with this cocktail-wise. Yeah, I think um, now the grape is relatively new in the world, yeah. and if you really want to nerd out, um, so because it's brand new, when you do a Google, you come up with a very old article from 2011 in a Napa uh, magazine. And then um, there's a really great write-up in Bon Appetit. But by really great, I mean, she went to Vermont, went to, and had a bunch of different hybrid wines, um, La Garagista, if you haven't had that yet. She does a lot of pet gnats. Um, and gave one sentence um, concerning Marquette the grape, and she said it's like sipping um, your favorite Christmas sweater. <laughs> there was something, there was something like that. And I was like, sign me up, you know? <laughs> Um, I feel like it's yes. funny the sip I had when you first opened the first can when we got it like this I actually like better than I remember liking it a month ago. Is that I crazy? Totally, no, it's not. It's it's developing these florals. Um, the jam is kind of sprawling out more. The black cherry, the cassis. Um, in um, Ellen, that's Ellen Bang in here, um, she came up with the word where I was like, that is it. There's some balsamic notes in it. Yep. So yep. a lot of times you'll, you'll kind of go, and it has old world characteristics of, you know, earthy, <laughs> but you know, a lot of that, that's an important wine term, um, or just something that's got a umami savory to it. Um, so I think for me, whenever I get that sort of, even if I'm not really sure what it is, that my my brain is like, what is that? That means it's interesting. You're sure. curious. It just makes the sip like, I gotta have another. I gotta figure this out. <laughs> so yeah. Now you mentioned cocktails. Do you have any suggestions on what this might work well with? Not yet. I'm still I'm still playing around with things. I mean, I went to a restaurant. Um, Couple, two weeks ago in Cambridge called Forage. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I had a cocktail and they it, it had absinthe in it and mm -hmm. whey. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the whey. Like the, the whey gives it. this unbelievable mouthfeel to things. Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. 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 And no, mountain mint and probably like a bee pollen. You know, maybe shrub. I can't. I can't remember, but. Um, so I, you know, I've been experimenting with all sorts of, you know, making shrubs and infusions and things like that, you know, quick, like quickly checking to make sure you won't kill yourself if you put like, you know, so, 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 I, so this, I inadvertently made mead at home last week. Oh, no, not you accident. made it a long time ago. He, he had like a honey syrup where it was like 50, 50 honey water for cocktail, for but he didn't yeah. have it in the fridge. It got... He lost it behind his coffee maker. Some, yes. It has some natural yeast in the air. Yes. Because, um, it, it truly fermented and didn't taste terrible and didn't kill us. <laughs> so, I'm so done. Like, I'm still with us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, and, and the shrubs are like really fun. To yes. Like kind of experiment all sorts of different things. Right? Absolutely. They are, um, I mentioned uh, shrubs to uh, 
Lee Heald, who does the Aha uh -huh Nights here, and she like winced, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and she goes, oh, I think of my aunt when I think of shrubs. <laughs> so shrubs used to be something that yeah. you did many, many years it's ago. Very old school. New old school. It's, and it's, I, it's funny when you say like the thing. So my enthusiasm earlier about pastis comes from being, you know, an eight year old girl and going with my dad to visit Nani, his oh. grandmother. And sitting on like the tall kitchen stool, and it was always when we visit, she would always say to my dad, "Stevie, would you like a little anisette?" And then she said, "And here's some for Amy. You're a big girl now." And you know, I was like oh, eight, hey. oh, and he's oh. like, "Nani, no, but like you know, there's no <laughs> way you can cross your Italian grandmother, you know, in her own kitchen." Yeah, she's so, thrown down. <laughs> so it was from eight years old being given a little glass of anisette and just knowing that like I had to be an adult and like yes. drink this, and it was so I've got that kind of love of anisette. Yes. Kind of ingrained. It's such a complicated. They infuse so much meaning into that one little thing. Right, and so for me, like kind of moving on to like pastis and things. Yeah, um, it, it's got some just like such a good memories for yes. me. Yes, yes. Um, but like, it's so funny about the shrub being like somebody's hand. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm gonna feed you a shrub, Lee, and you're gonna like it. Yep. So that's you know a goal. Um, okay, so I did want to point out um, with our RJR champagnes. Mm -hmm. So Anthony's got this crazy situation happening. She she does so many amazing things. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another Liz, Liz Rustler. Liz Rustler. So Liz Rustler, she's up in Boston. She does um, engraving and lettering. Engraving and lettering. So often when people think of champagne methods, champagnes, they think celebration, congratulations. And so Liz Ressler up in Boston, she engraves champagne bottles. She engraves all sorts oh, of things. Yes. That's cool. So Anthony is now going to be carrying RJR with either Massachusetts with love or best wishes. Yeah, that's wonderful. So I just love that hand lettering in general is so in right now. Um, there's this harkening back, I think, with not just handwriting but like cocktailing too. I think there's some cool thing going on. When you say handwriting, too, I mean it's everything is so electronic right now. I mean our whole lives are online. Yes. Um, and the idea of, you know, Someone. pen on paper, mm -hmm. yep. kind of early on the working remotely, it's like, well, when I have to take notes, when I'm just kind of thinking through projects on myself on paper, I like went and I dug up my old oh. fountain pen I had. I'm like, I'm going to write with my fountain well, pen uh, <laughs> rather than be on a Zoom call. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and lives up in Boston. She also does uh, classes for things like that. Too. That's right. Wonderful. She can get like kits that she'll put together and she'll do live classes about that and just bringing that back. She's also doing um, custom lettering, so if anyone wants something custom on the bottle, oh, so there's just a lead time. So it's a good idea for um, any gifts or any, mm -hmm. you know, it's any fantastic. any weddings that have been, you know, down <laughs> downsized or yeah. you know, virus sized. Uh, get that for so, for our yep. barely acknowledged 25th anniversary or like this that. month. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Um, I wanted to also shout out, Anthony's got some totes with the, uh, now this, these are precious cause we don't, we don't do these, these size cans anymore. So these are about, about half a bottle per can. Um, so those were the, those were problems. So do, <laughs> do you think the farmers fizz in the large bottles still? Yes. yes. We okay. brought them back. You know, in June as well. Okay. Um, it, we're the, we've been in the past have would like buy a case at the beginning of yes. the summer, and um, we actually brought um, some to a mm. Super Bowl party one year. Oh. And our friends were just like, "What in the world is this? This is wonderful!" <laughs> so when we got together with them for dinner, like the next time we brought them some more. <laughs> yes. And it, it's just people who haven't had something like yes, that. Yes, yeah. It's it's so fun and celebratory. And, 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 super, yet, and super local. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, and less waste, obviously, with the larger. Right. And a lot of people prefer glass over a can. So we yeah. are happy to oblige. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I do have beers here, if you're interested in as well. 
I so know. I actually am oh. because we had bought the sampler that Anthony had of the beers with yes. like one of each. Okay. And I honestly am trying to remember between two of them which I liked better because I, I am very, very, very picky about beer. Like, oh. I don't like overly hopped. I don't like yeah. too bland. Yeah. And I can't remember if it was, I think there's a Kolsch style. So there is a Kolsch and, and there's like a, a one that's more like of a very interesting lager kind of lighter. Yeah. Okay. So I work at, at West Fort Rivers, but I also work at Turtle Swamp Brewing. So oh. another local brewery. Um, and this place is in Jamaica Plain. It's the official beer of Jamaica Plain. Um, as, as a wine drinker, um, like I approach my beers, I think with that same sort of thing, I usually even drink my beers out of a wine glass, mainly because I like to swirl a lot and smell. <laughs> and usually, you know, beer glasses don't give you that. Um, so let's, let's jump to, let's see here. So the Kolsch, um, what Andy has, uh, we ran out at the brewery. We'll brew it again someday, but maybe in the fall. Okay. Um, we were doing uh, a beer tasting um, on Zoom probably in April, and we were all, you know, smelling and having the Kolsch. This is a copper Kolsch, so a malted Kolsch um, out of wine glasses. And uh, one of the um, one of the people on our call or on our video, he was getting watermelon notes. And I was like, what? <laughs> I never even thought that's an option. You know, th these, I love these beers because they, they're, they're so complicated. Um, okay. Yeah, and so I'm not, no, I, I, I used little... to like hops, but I am um, hypersensitive to bitter. And I actually really like the malt part of beer. And it's very hard these days to find things that are not like IPA, double IPA, you know. Yeah. Um, and that actually kind of balance nicely with the malt. Flavor. You are correct. That, and you know, a lot of people are like, when, when is uh, that fad going to go? And I, I don't think it will. No, you I know, don't. still, you know, they're still so popular. Um, thank you. I really like this beer. And where the and New England is the epicenter of all of that. New England and California is between. You know the heady topper people that yep. it's coming down. You know it's, it's spreading everywhere. You have to compete, oh yeah. You have to compete with that. Yep, yep. Um. <laughs> oh, it's Jimmy the Plains and Coast. Yeah, you said them. Yep, the O two one three O. Um. So people will either say, "Can I get copper Coast or "Can I get the zip code?" Because it's <laughs> such a mouthful to say that. But it's was that the one? It's this one is, of them. This is one of the two that I really like. Okay, yeah. It's it. I do love this. I'm actually gonna try this with you because Liz, do you want in on this? What is it? The copper Kolsch? No, it's a beer. That's right. Never mind. Yeah, um, I still yeah. She wanted to kill me. Close call. Close call. Won't be great. It would not go well. Um, because we're we've been out for a while, so I haven't had this for. Oh, cheers. <laughs> Happy hour. <laughs> Have you been to Newport Vineyards at all? No. Not in recent memory. They have mm. a, they've opened a brewery in their winery too, so you can do two for. Hey, where is that in Newport? It's um, on 138 East Main Road. Okay. It's actually in Middletown, but yep. it's like right. I just don't understand the rules of going back and forth through Rhode Island now. Nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> they don't stop you, do they? No. No, I mean, it, it's, but, uh, it's more paper. to do, I believe, with, like, if you are renting a house or... You know, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. The All Ears? That was the other, yes, indeed. So, made with 30% of this is uh, corn. Everything's grown in Massachusetts. Um, if I didn't point this out, I don't think... It's so subtle you wouldn't get it. But because of the corn, the finish of this is like a corn tortilla. And it takes a good seven, ten seconds, and all of a sudden in a, all of a, you're like, oh, there it is. <laughs> but it's just a nice citrus, super easy, uh, fresh baked bread, just easy. Thank you. 
And there are things that when you have them to eat that you really do want a beer. Yes. Um, yeah, I drink both. Uh, I, I probably drink beers more just because of the can size versus cracking open a bottle. Um, but now we have our little fizz bottles. <laughs> yeah, I know. Again, danger, but but not <laughs> convenience. Yeah. So um, you know these these beers are just very pleasurable. A, a lot like the fizzes too. They're just easy. Um, it's, a, it's a great brewery. It's a it's one of, like it's. I mean, you guys in night shift are. Oh, kind of the show. Oh my gosh! Yes. So, so we're down here on weekends and in Medford. Otherwise, and there was a ah. point a few years ago where he declared he wasn't going to drink any wine that was made more any than beer. six miles from any our beer. house. Oh. Any beer? That's right. Any beer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it was it was like night shift. It was idle hand. Yeah. It was yeah. Just, there were so many. <laughs> yeah, there are. The concentration it's is really incredible. Um, but no, these are really, really good. Um, they did just can something that they haven't canned um, in, you know, three years. Um, and it is the staff favorite. Um, it's the brewer named his, you know, this is his namesake beer, Nick. Yeah. So it, Nick's bitter. And one of the reasons why we didn't, can it is because people see bitter and they're like, no. Is it like an English style bitter? Absolutely. That's, that's so fine. it's the bitter is almost more like you can liken it more to tannin. It just kind of dries yeah. things out or acts as a sealant for all that like malted milk ball, unsweetened chocolate, where there's original sort of yumminess. For me, I get kind of the um, red delicious apple skin fruit on it. Mm -hmm. Um it's just again very pleasurable. Four percent alcohol, so it's super low. Is anyone else making a ESP in the winter? So I'm so glad you asked that. I so I think um, Lamplighter did one with a crossword puzzle on it, like two years ago or something. They don't have it on their website, um, but other Devil's Purse. Devil's yes, Purse. Yes, that's that's yeah. the yeah. just those two, yeah. as far as I can Eons find. Uh, eons, eons, eons ago, like like we're talking decades. Oh, okay. Harpoon had at one point had one. Oh, yeah, I know. And it's, oof. I mean, I would. I I'm assuming you've had them in England. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you too? It's like Fuller's. Fuller's yeah. is an institution. Like, but but it's there not are so just many. Fuller's. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I you know once you ship them. Um, yeah. I, but I I was lucky enough to be in rural England in, in November, and we were in Devon and Cornwall. We were staying in this town called Sheepwash. <laughs> it was like awesome. And I I mean, the pub we and it was an amazing restaurant as well. But they everything was hand pumped. Yep. Everything was like room temp, very very low or no carbonation. Like pub temperature, whatever. It's yes. Like down below you. And, and it was like on a being on a movie set. You know, people were coming in and they were doing their thing and there was a fireplace and they heard our accents and they came over and we were the sparkly objects in the room. <laughs> it became like this amazing, I almost cried. I was like, I want to, I'm going to move here. I'm going to move here today. I got a talking to one time by the publican in a oh. pub in New Yorkshire because you were holding the table for us <laughs> and I wanted, you know, the pub draft. Yeah. And so I was ordering two pints and he's like, this one of these is for you. And I'm like, yep. He's like, that's not ladylike. You what? Should, he's like, you should be ordering a gin and tonic or a half pint at most. What? <laughs> and I'm well, like, and you clearly have never drank in my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Nope, I know what I'm doing. I would like a point, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> How yucky. It was pretty funny. Oh my gosh. And you proved him wrong. Thank you. Uh, we were one time, um, it might have been the same trip um, okay. in yeah. Wales, um, in Conway, which is in the northern coast of Wales. 
and it had been rainy, 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 and not sunny. And the pub was right on the water, and everyone would sit out on the wall that was like, here's the, it's like, here's the pubs and shops, and there's a little walking street, and then there's a wall that drops off right into the harbor. And so everyone was sitting on the wall, and you could order from the pub, and they would bring you in a pint glass that was made of plastic. Okay. And there was a deposit on the glass. Oh, but they did that because they didn't want you know broken glass yeah, everywhere. Course, yeah. And there would be little kids that would come out around and say, "Can I take your your glass for you?" And they were collecting the um, deposit back to like earn some spending money. You know these like you know ten year old boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But everyone just like reveling in the sun and like sitting out on the harbor wall, just like yes. Do you remember that? It was so just, wholesome. It was a, and, yeah. yeah. It's, it's very wholesome. Like the whole town was turning out after the rain went away. And, and this is in Yorkshire? Uh, this one was in Wales, actually. Okay. In Conway. So. I just, I love, their, their sense of community is so good. Isn't that so amazing? Yeah, it's like. I just took a step and I was like. That is. It's like, it, it's a throwback because you don't get yes. them that often. Yep. So, um, these are new. I'll, Anthe will have them. Um, uh, but, uh, I haven't, well, just because we just canned them last week. Um, it's really actually, nice. I'm sorry. Fieldstone, uh, Fieldstone Market in Marion also what? has them. They just got their liquor license. Yeah. Uh, or wine and beer. I, I You're did. walking there every day now, aren't you? Ah! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> When you know, I, they they brought when I went to field yeah, when I went to field yesterday stuff. there were so signs up about uh, they will cart yeah, anyone yes, everyone so for alcohol now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to Fieldstone yesterday. So, okay. Yeah, and so, I saw I saw the signs about ID. Yeah. The, so. uh, and we are already talking about doing um, you know cooking um, classes so and wine pairing um, on Zoom um, and just kind of really rocking so it out. Like, Fieldstone has made our life so much better to be able to get like produce and other yes. products, like just so close to home rather yeah. than having, I mean, until previously, like the other option was um, like the Sid Wayne or Gourmet Outlet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But. Yep. It's a, it's such a luxury to have something so close. Yeah. She um, started going when they were doing like the. Senior hours at Shaw's and stuff. Oh, she was like, oh, no, no, no. But she does most of her shopping at Fieldstone. So yeah. 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 And then um, we're doing curbside delivery. You would call them yeah. up. Yeah. They would call you back. You could yeah. order in and then you'd go pick it up. Yeah. And they did a wonderful yeah. job of it. Okay. And then the feeling of being, you know, local. Yeah. Like you mm -hmm. actually know Arnie. He's okay. there okay. every day. Um, yep. That's just, yep. and they, you know, the produce, like what farm is it from nearby? That's right, yeah. right there. Yeah, so. it's it's so good. Okay. Do you know anything about what's going to happen with harvest and our support? Is it going to be? Are you going to, tours going to come back during harvest, or is it going to? We haven't even talked about it. Um, I think. Just with having to become a restaurant in like one week, yeah. it, we are just, um, so, I mean, we would love to bring them back. I mean, we'll truncate the time you're inside, obviously, but we can clearly just talking outside, um, get the job done. Um, I was at Truro and I'll have to ask you if Greenville did this. Um, they weren't doing wine tastings, but they were doing just a flight. They did flights. Yeah. yeah. Newport Vineyards and doing flights. Okay. Um, when we went, they have the part of the barn that has an awning. Yeah. You could go and do all the bathroom, whatever, but they had tables all through, through the, um, a little longer at a time, but the, the oh, grape trees. Oh, so wow. So they made it straight out, so you were like, <laughs> one side, <laughs> one yeah. It was awesome. That's even better than yeah. usual. So it went on a rainy day, so too. Bad. They have, like, the nice umbrella. Yeah. So... Even if the weather's not great, you can still go and have fun. Yeah, I, w I went to the winery oh, yeah, yeah. before I got here, and um, there right. were tons well, of people out there because because the umbrellas. Mm -hmm. um, can I open the sour for you? Yes, please. I assume you're under the same restriction, like you have to have food on site from capacity. Okay. Like real not food. in some. 
Um, every brewery and winery now, you have to purchase something that they make on site in order for them to serve you wine or beer. Wow. Yep. How do you do that? Do Say that again. Oh, uh, <laughs> in a very humble way. <laughs> um, uh, cookies. Yeah. No, it has to be full on yep. hot. Um, so at Turtle Swamp, we're just for for now and maybe for the time being, either a hot dog, vegan or regular. Um, I cheese panini. Yep. Um, we've got some, you know, very tasty or herb, herbal naughty spreads, and then uh, just a grilled cheese. Yep. So we try to make it, you know, financial or you know, yep. just yeah, yep. pretty negligible um, within exactly. the realm of things. Yeah, I mean, and so many breweries are used to having like a food truck yep. mm -hmm. to provide. And does we'll it, still that, do food that, trucks it, when we can. Yeah. Does a food truck solve it for you? Like, do you have a food truck? Do you, are you eliminate for delivery? No. No. You know, if you've read the complaints that the governor got, I get it. Yeah, we, restaurants. Yeah, we don't. We don't. We saw, we, we saw some dumb stuff. Yeah, I mean, people were just. Yeah. They were drinking too much, and staff is not used to, like, you know, babysitting the tables and constantly having to do that. Like the people buying like the one bag of chips and then having like seven beers. Yeah. So it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. We just. Everything has to be, yep. you know, just a little bit more attentive and thoughtful. Yep. So, you know, I think we'll, we'll figure it out. Right. Um, but in these dramatic shifts, it just has happened. And plus that yearning for normalcy. Yep. Uh, yep. You know, we miss each other. We miss yep. the... And we, and we, we miss the third place, yes. which is not, yep. not home and not work. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. at this point, I almost miss work. <laughs> I <don't. laughs> It is true, the, the macabre. It's so dark. So, so one of the things I miss from work is on my desk at work, I had a picture of me with my parents, and it was in late September, mm. and we are at the vineyard, standing oh. in front of oh, the vines, just laden with those grapes. And he took the picture, and it's me with my parents. Oh. And yeah, so yeah. And I'm actually trying to figure out how I can like get permission to go into the office to get. I mean, just some other things I need to. Of but course. Like, that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. So anyway, yeah. Yeah. No, it's um. I mean, I think. I think ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll end up having a better conversational hygiene, like how we discuss things, because we miss each other, right. and we know that we we should cherish each other more. Um, I, you know, because we're robbed from each other. Um, right. So I'm hoping at some point, you know, things like that will happen. I know for um, for Zoom calls and like my tastings that I've been doing, it is definitely more intimate. It's mm -hmm. weird. Yep. But I see you right there. If you haven't talked, I'll call on you. It's a, you know, because you're signing up and you're going to give a good hour mm -hmm. and you're sitting at your own house. It's yep. a lot. You can really do a lot more with the tasting. So I'm excited uh, for that aspect of it. Um, I, um, Liz? Yes. What is the date of our October? Oh, I was going to look that up for you. And um, I didn't. Please hold. Please hold. I mean, you can. You don't have to. Play we so we're going to bring back the wine salons, and um, I think it's toward the end of October we're going to have our first one. Um, it will be in conjunction with the book, the Fork Door book. Yeah, we, we can. We need to see if that's on Kindle. Um, so we will. Um, yes, it, we'll have a tasting bundle, so you can pick that up at Anthe's, and we'll go through the wines, and it will be if you're. Sunday, October 25th at 3 p.m. Sunday, October 25th, 3 p.m. Part tasting, part salon, part cooktop. Yeah. We just, we <laughs> got it sounds book. like all the things we love. Yeah, I mean, my tastings are already nerdy. Um, but I thought, Anthony thought, the book, Liz thought that having the book component will kind of add a little bit more um, substance to it um, mm -hmm. and make it uh, even more worth your time. Um, Cause you have the actual book and it is, I I've read it numerous times. It's changed my life. Um, she's funny. The author, she's witty. It's, it's so good. Um, so, so this beer, is it, is it a, like a Berliner Weisser or is it a, I mean, when you say sour, what? Kettle sour brewed with hibiscus. Um, and 
you know, you can taste that it's it's very well balanced. Yep. It's not, it's um, we didn't, we nice didn't use any alcohol. lacto or anything, yep. um, but it has a really nice sip. Um, it first starts off kind of a gr uh, gummy bear, Swedish fish, yep. tart cranberry. And then after, okay, so when, when the tap room was still open, the bartender and I, we were always two people. We would really talk about, you know, what are these flavors we were getting? And the fine sour, that was one of my best like conversations because we were like, oh, right there. That's a little like, and then my uh, coworker, Tyler, he goes, it's strawberry milk. Like that yep, thing yep. in the 90s, to, you know, that gross yep. Nesquik <laughs> strawberry <laughs> powder. I remember Whittle. You know what I'm talking about. First one. night, I chugged one. Oh, and I was like, we need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I think was like it the first night. It was down here. Yeah, we yeah. Parked on, probably on the Elm Street garage. Yeah, and then we had like, five like, minutes and we left. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best strawberry milk story. Oh, I've I ever hate heard. it. <laughs> it is. And I knew when she wanted it. I knew, <laughs> that, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh. I've had so many changes with my mom like that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Regret. Um, yeah, so I, to this day, I'm like, there are two things in life I can't stand food or drink wise. And that is one of them. So I have an important question mm -hmm. because we were getting strawberry milk and made the jokes and had the horror stories. <laughs> and then we were like, no, it's more like Captain Crunchberry, like this, okay. the milk after. All right. Uh, and we even got the cereal flavors. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's... That I can handle. That's our yeah. thing. Um, so there there are very renowned restaurants in New York that sell things called like tiger's milk because it's like to taste like after you've eaten your Frosted Flakes with Tony the Tiger on no it. No way. Yep. Just... Gross. And the whole idea of I've, I've seen cereal milk flavored ice cream. I get it. Oh, okay. It's so hipstery. Yeah. I, I, okay, they can make it gluten free. Okay. Aww. Of course. Absolutely. Um, one of these beers <laughs> is the most popular at the brewery by over half the sales. Even so, this the fine that you just had, and this one is is really for people and the Kolsch, I guess. No, and the all ears when people don't drink beer, yep. but they're there to meet their friends. And they're like, I don't drink beer. What do you have? <laughs> so this one. With, with that vocal prep? I, for me, that's like. That's not what I sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's a little like I roll annoyed that we don't have wine or cider on tap. So there is some too. And so, well, I'll say, do you like fruit? And they'll go, yeah. And I'll say, this is like lychee fruit, marmalade, uh, like saltine cracker finish. It is, it is like about as perfect as it gets. Just a little, yeah. And we named it. Okay, that's really nice. It's that's, ridiculous. Okay, yeah. but it that's has great. the words like IPA on it, doesn't it? Or, so here's the thing. Well, there's there nothing there. There's Here, yeah, so what you do, and this is what chemically the makes the New England IPA New England, is you add the hops no, for the that. end of the brewing cycle where the temperature has plummeted. So it's a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the bitter chemistry, the IBUs, never become soluble in solution, or it's very, very minimal. And yet, the fruit chemistry, whoosh, hemorrhages into right. the liquid. And there's that, there's something about hops that I love that's like the florally hop. Yeah, which, yeah. Which blends with it, like. That's real good. That's what, I've got two of the pulses sitting on the counter there. Did you need one of those? Probably. Which I would help you with. <laughs> and we don't run out of the that one we actually bought new tanks so we can keep up uh, just because it's such a it's such a big sale for us it's, for it's actually for novice drinkers and like real diehard hop heads they it's just and then everyone in between it's just pleasurable I, I thought that I was not going to enjoy that and I did I know I was like <laughs> but I, I everyone I serve it to they just love it um, 
So that's the orange line. Sure. So this is good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So there is a cocktail we do. We did when the uh, well, we might bring it back someday, but it's the fine line. So we add the fine and the orange line. And mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. awesome too. Do you want to try it? Sure. Yeah. Something I'm thinking about. Have I ever actually been on the orange line? I don't uh, think so. I have. Maybe. You know what? That's a lie. But, I went on it for two yeah, seconds. Yeah. yeah it's it's not that. something that you want to like commit yourself to yeah. regularly. I know. No, no, no. It's uh, <laughs> red and green is where I stay. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, orange line gets you over towards the south end, though. You can eat well off the orange line. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think there are new. Someday everything will be new and sparkly and I mean, nice. new car smell. You can do that now while no one's And then there's I the know, whole, you know, know, green line extensions. Well, yep. Yeah. Yep. So, so Liz, yeah. have I missed anything? Gosh, I don't think so. I did want to shout out that the, the Fizz Red was covered in the Boston Globe um, on the 25th. So thank you, Globe. And... Um, I think that's all I have yeah. at this moment. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you, for it. Thank, thank you. So thank, thank you, everyone. World. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank this you, everyone. Like <laughs> amazing. Drink local. Shop.